I've got to install the new chainsaw holder that Miss Miranda got me for Christmas here. I don't know how good the lighting is in here. It's, I just pulled it into the, my back woodshed area where I keep my store my wood. And, and when it gets low, I bring my machines in before it gets rainy. It seems a little earlier than most years when I'm doing it this year. But anyway, I've got to install that. I am becoming a huge proponent for this link box and this link system that Ski Skidoo offers four four tabs I'm making it look a lot harder than it had to be four tabs and voila boxes out and apparently this fit right in here now the instructions are supposed to be online unfortunately I wasn't able to find them anywhere so double check make sure you can see that I wasn't able to find the instructions I didn't look that hard to be honest but anyway it looks pretty simple drill four holes through the frame mark it drill it bolt in your shoes holder after, after that I don't know we'll see how it goes well, as with any job that I do generally speaking there's always extra parts like these two brackets you can call these the really don't need brackets I guess I'll figure out where they go I mean, hard no no again and a bunch of bolts look like they're just not quite long enough which would be perfect but regardless it's probably gonna take me all about 48 hours to get the tool, necessary tools together to do this anyway. Yeah, that'll work. Not too long. Cool. Okay, well, get ready to do this. Just wanted to show everybody what I'm doing, and uh, we'll go from there. This is my new 2022 Expedition. So, I am crazy happy with this machine. I got it last year. 600 E-Tech on it. CSE actually, I believe it is. I am crazy happy with it. The flotation is un unbelievable. Um, I haven't touched wood, but I haven't even gotten close to being stuck. Other than in my own driveway when it's a sheet of ice. Great shot. Great shot, Chris. So... Well, as you all know, 2020, 21, 22, terrible years to try and buy anything. Um, I've been looking everywhere, talking to dealerships across North America, as a number of people were, and trying to find it, find an Expedition, a Tundra, Scandic, you name it. And, uh, well, it turns out, one came to me. Somebody, I guess, unfortunately, probably didn't... Uh, do, do as well through COVID and maybe lost a job, but they had ordered this as is with the heated seat, backrest, armrest, uh, the link box on the back attachment, heavy duty rail. Ordered it, snow checked it that way, and luckily uh, I got a phone call from the dealership saying, Hey, guy snow checked it but doesn't want it. Do you want it? I was in the next day and picked it up. I mean, yeah, absolutely, I wanted it. And it turns out the link box, I don't know how big that thing is, it's supposed to be 90 liters I imagine, but the link box is phenomenal. I couldn't have built a better box. Um, all the attachments that go on, I got a gun boot that I'm going to be putting on it. Um, the side mirrors, uh, just absolutely everything. Still going through braking, I've, I've run two, two tanks of gas in it. This thing just, I don't know, it creates its own fuel I think. <laughs> I seemed to ride it quite a bit last year. and. Never put gas in it or oil for that matter. Just 
that 600 e tech they knew what they were doing and uh yeah, Miss Miranda likes it as well. She'll ride on the back where without those heated grips, I don't know that she'd go out with me too much. But I'll get a pit, I'll get some tools together and we'll get started. Well, about the same as anything I do. Um, spend about two percent of the time reading instructions. Well, that's a lie. 1% of the time reading instructions, 1% of the time staring at instructions, wondering what the hell the instructions actually mean. And in this case, no difference. Nothing different, I should say. Oh. i got to drill holes there and there, two up in here. And then you got these backing plates, which I have no idea how they're supposed to fit. It makes no sense at all. I'm sure that's what they're for, though. I'm sure they're going to end up in the garbage, and I'll just use, end up using washers or something anyway. And as with anything, this looks like it's going to be a pain in the rump to drill out. But we'll give it a go. Use my backside, everybody. That went incredibly smoother than I thought it would. So we got to do with here. A box of fun stuff. We have to these ones go through there. No washers. Let's just dry fit it and see what happens. You see this is gonna be in the way of my Slid at times. Well, looky looky. <laughs> you guys want to give me a hand? Somebody? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try falling off now, pal. <laughs> so far, so good. So bad. That actually went smoother than I thought it would. These are the ones that I don't understand. Hmm. Okay, maybe it does work. Well, howdy doody. 
So these brackets do fit, but they only go on the bottom hole. They don't go in the hole that's through the frame. The frame's on its own. Just like a big F you to the frame, I guess. Better than I thought it would, to be honest. What the heck? It actually fits too. How can that be? Hmm. You just know this is going to end up on the side of the road, side of some bush trail somewhere. That feels like that needs a washer of some kind, otherwise, that's just going to press it. I'm going to go find some washers. I'll be back. So I guess before I get too, too carried away here, there's two more holes that I could drill down in these bottom brackets. I don't think they're where they're supposed to be, but whatever. They're close, right? Huh? I'll just drill those out real quick. <laughs> Washers here. What I'm gonna do is on these big long ones here, hold it from the inside out, just grab a little washer on there. I'm pretty impressed with this so far. I hope the chainsaw fits it. Guess I should have checked that beforehand. That's the one. Okay. This. There's no way I'm going to get the socket onto that. So let's just see what we can do here. 0, 0.0 chance. Right back once I grab a wrench. Uh, it had to be a 10 mil. We all know what happens with 10 mil. Well, nobody knows what happens with a 10 mil. Yeah. They just sort of disappeared on all of us. But I found one. Not the one I wanted, but. It says Loctite on it already, so it's going to be a little hard to spin. This is usually when I find out that I forgot to put the washer on. But I didn't. Washer's on. I'm gonna crank this a bit. Torque specs be fucking down. I don't care. Blue Loctite. Okay, so there's six bolts here. Two are done up, four just have to be cranked. Start with this little fella. Just 
chart on the hand. Put a knife through this hand, my left hand, last summer, or sorry, last trapping season. Now it's it's kind of numb. The palm of my hand is numb where I jam the knife into it. Broke it off. Super numb. So anything that kind of presses on it just feels weird like that. That feels really strange. dang happy with this machine as long as that sounds I'm just you're used to everything being a pain in the ass you know like golly I got new headlights for my quad you needed an engineer mechanic an architect and, and a French Luca bore to help you put those in and even that even with all that help needed a whole bunch of luck still that was terrible this link system I love it it's like a guy who rides snowmobiles actually designed everything this reminds me of the story not knowing how to tighten anything up. My dad had a sports car growing up, a little Pantera, and uh, never let me work on it ever. I always wanted to wrench on it. And never let me wrench on it. One day, got the engine back and my brother wasn't home. So it's like, oh, I guess I'll get Chris to help. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, put the starter in it, transaxle vehicle. See ya. Had engines in it. Went to put the starter in, I'm underneath it, cranking on this one bolt, starter bolt, it's about eight inches long, goes through the starter into the block. And uh, I yell up through the engine compartment to my dad, hey, how tight do you want this? And he said, snap it off. And it just as he said that as a joke, <laughs> snapped it off. <laughs> engine had to come out. Ah, good times, good times. You're welcome, Dad. What's that? Well, pretty handy, pretty dandy. This is supposed to be flexible for the size of the machine. Or the size of the saw that you're putting in it. I'm gonna get my saw and see how it looks. All right. Is it in with the cover or no? Pretty happy with that. I got this new 460 with a 20 inch bar on it. I am tickled with it, absolutely tickled. I had the 28 inch, um, sorry, 26 before this one, and that just the balance was terrible. So I'm gonna pick this up, and that's gonna be a handy dandy little bush saw right there. Good deal. Okay, so all there is now is basically put the link box back on use the parts and tools that I brought out but I'll worry about that after I'll do it so that you can put my butt in your face Let's see if I can do this with the chainsaw still in it try not to knock over my teeth which I haven't touched probably if I've removed everything out of it a little easier to me being dumb. Yeah. Oh, 
just tickled with this link box. Yeah, that is something else. Highly, highly recommended. And that's not a, just because I have it, I'm not the type of guy that will tell you that's good stuff because that's what I bought. Honestly, I buy a Dodge and it's a piece of poop. I'm going to tell you it's a piece of poop. I buy a Chevy and it's a piece of poop. I'm going to tell you it's a piece of poop. I'm happy with something. You're going to hear about it as well. And then this machine from day one has been nothing but a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. That's it. So chainsaws, detached boxes back on. Let's go trapping.